All right, we have an order I will show you today. That is what I was talking about, my one item that I have with a few different variations that I sell on Amazon and Etsy. This order is from Etsy. It is a boot jack that I make and I've been selling. On Etsy, I offer personalization. They are ordering the big jack which is the one that is made for bigger boots. And they want it monogrammed with this. Let me find it. With a wreath and LL initials. And so that will go on the face of it. I will carve it out. Then I will epoxy it. We'll let it sit overnight. Then we'll finish assembling and ship it off tomorrow. All right, here I am cutting the blank for the boot jack. I'll cut the bevel on the end of this piece, the piece that goes underneath it that raises it up at the angle that I like. I put a bevel on one side or on three sides and flat on the other. And I'll speed this up, speed a lot of this up so it's not as terrible, painful to watch. Sanding is exciting. But I sand both sides down where they're ready to be stained. This one's gonna be a blue distressed. So I'll get it sanded down. I don't worry about the edges because that's all gonna be cut off as you'll see whenever I'm staining. And I'll pick the best side to go up. And I'm using this poly stain mixture, which I did not like. I usually mix my own and it works out perfectly but I'd ran out of the blue I didn't want to wait for them to mix me some and so I bought this and I did not like it it's just too thin it'd be great for whitewashing but I just for what I do I put it solid and then I sand it off as you'll see later in the video and with my mixture I can do it you know one time and it's coated I do come back and and seal it after it's all done to cover the epoxy and everything so it doesn't have to be you know this mixture that they've got but it's just so thin that it was really tough to coat and so of course I'll make two coats I sand in between the coats and made two on this but I won't be using this for this production anymore I'll just save it for some kind of white washing stain you no know, type project and it'd be great for that you know because it's got the it's got the sealer and the stain mixed together but that's what I've been doing for years mixing my own just taking the stain and, and mixing it okay it's all dry I am putting my mask on that way I can ride on it and do what it I got to do to put it on the CNC machine to carve it out and it will mask off what I don't want to get epoxy on and it works pretty good this is regular old dollar store stuff that you buy and I'm a dollar tree from the dollar tree so it's not it's not the good stuff by any means but that's all that I need for what I'm doing here and I will take and find the center spot here in a second and that way I can I can put it on the CNC and get to carving I'll be using a 60 degree bit a small bit because I don't like it to go very deep and that way it takes less epoxy I'll fasten it down and let it start running 
then I'll do some other stuff I need to be doing while it's working. The first run will be the the uh, L L monogram where I that they requested with the wreath, and that's what it's doing. And uh, of course, this is sped up because my machine's not very fast, and so that's not right. So while it's doing that, I work on other things I just keep an ear out for any kind of malfunctions that might be going on over there on the CNC machine it's only a little bit away from me 15 20 feet away from me and it's coming on in here it's finishing the wreath and it'll start the LL monogram here shortly As you see, the mask cuts away pretty good with the sharp bit, and that way I can put the epoxy in, and it contains it a lot where I don't have to sand it back down and, and uh, get to work. But the sanding would be okay in this project because any kind of distress looks fine. You'll see me put my hands here because sometimes that piece pops out. That's I cut these out because that matches the grain and that's my um, dowels that I stick in to cover up my screw holes and it just cuts it out for me the right dimension. As you see right here it's making the holes for the for the um, dowel rods. That's where I'll, I'll put my screws in to hold it to the base and is um, using the same wood grain works to make it match in this case since it's covered it doesn't really matter but I like to do it anyway here it is almost finished it's cutting around I have it going real slow towards the end just in case my nails don't hold that's why my hands getting pretty close to in jeopardy is because I hold those pieces down just in case they want to fly and it ruins it at the very end so it's done and I pull it off there and I go over there and inspect it and I'll use a toothbrush to to get all the sawdust after I already blew it out but I'll get the sawdust and I'll clean it out any kind of chips that may be hanging in there I run it around the router and do both sides as you see when I flip it over it starts actually looking more like a finished project more complete and again that's the edges that will be sanded down and and um you know and I put that little corner edge on there so I can so I can sand it easier you know around in the corners here I'm mixing my epoxy and I always overdo it on the epoxy but that's all right. I'll take this and then I will mix it for two minutes. They say to do it for two minutes and I've done it that way ever since I started with epoxy about a year ago. And so far, it, I've never had a problem. But the epoxy I use, the bubbles just come right, of it, right out of it. Every once in a while I have to hit it with a heat gun, but not on something small like this. And, I do it for two minutes and then I mix the, the color in there and I use a syringe on the little stuff like this. I grab a, it's just a hobby type syringe and suck it in there and go through the tedious work of sticking it down the hose. You know, I could just pour it on there because it's got the mask on there, but but um, I try not to make any bigger mess than what I can. My shop's already a big enough mess as it is, as you can see. But um, I put it on there. I fill it up all the way. And then I will take a napkin and just press on the top of it just for slightly. Don't give it much time to soak in. But that pretty much brings it to level where I can normally I wait, you know, a couple hours and before when well, it's getting good and tacky but 
for the sake of the video I went ahead and, and pulled it off which did give me a little bit of you know runoff there as you see in a couple of spots and you see how graceful I am here but I pull it off there and it's ready to clean up a little bit I'll use a little bit of um, fingernail polish remover acetone you know and and uh and just clean up what little bit got loose on me and and it won't be that big of a deal anyway like I say I'll be distressing a little bit around those corners anyway around that wreath anyway okay we are back for the second day of this project where we are going to sand it down because the the epoxy looked good so I start sanding it down smoothing it down getting it ready for the final finish and I work it you know pretty much normal the same way I use a about a 220 grit to get it pretty smooth and I'll come back with the with a block to to um get it you know smooth as I can get it without spending a ton of time and effort once I get it sanded down I'll take it over and I will assemble it there's the block in the two two um, pegs to go in the two dowel pieces that we cut out whenever we cut the boot jack out and I will line it up I just pretty much eyeball it and I've done enough times that I don't use anything else I'll just pre-drill my holes they're pretty straight if they're not straight I'll fix them and then I'll add some wood glue and I've never had one of these boot jacks returned except for one person that ordered this big one whenever they really wanted the little one I've had one out of almost a hundred returned so I put the indoor outdoor wood screws in I'll leave them out a little bit so I can line up the holes drill it together work both sides until it's good and tight but not overly tight I'll line up the grain it's really important when there's not a solid finish on it um, to make sure the grains are lined up that's the reason why I use these instead of just regular old store-bought dowels is that they have the same wood grain or pretty close to it whenever you go to put them in there I glue it wipe off the excess glue flip it over wipe off the excess glue squeeze out that comes out and then I put something on it and I let it dry for about 30 minutes I put some tape around the little pegs and and I use oscillating saw to cut them off I put the tape on there because every once in a while I'll get off and I will dig into it and that tape usually just lets it glide and it doesn't uh, mess up it will scratch it a little bit it doesn't matter because I'm gonna sand it down to level anyway and then I'll take it over and I will put the finish on there I'll put it back on there where I sand it and then I'll put it on the rest of it and as I'm doing this I will look for any rough spots that I might have missed and if so I'll go back and do a little bit more sanding but basically I use this solid stain which as you see I switched to back to my solid stain after I went and got some and it only takes one coat whenever I do this most of the time every once in a while either I'll miss something or I'll go back and I'll add some more to it and but normally it just takes one coat because it's this solid stain I do mix it with the poly which gives it you know a a um, protective seal but I do add three coats of sealer at the end so whenever it's done drying I give it I don't give it too long I give it 30 minutes or so and it'll it'll dry good enough where I can sand it and as you see I sanded 
and it got the uh, knocked the peg off where I was so I'll put some more on there because I don't want that to show and it's just a I knew better than to do it but I did it anyway watch I hit that sand and and uh when I was sanding on that spot you know I yanked it off her and so I will smooth it back out let it dry again and then it's basically ready I will start distressing it now and sometimes I go a little bit too deep sometimes it looks more like a flaw than a where it's worn and so I'll go back in there and fix that you'll see that in a minute but I'll just hit the edges and the corners and the sides so that's doesn't look good right there and and I knew it and so I went over here and got a little bit of stain put it on there then I wiped it back off on the spots that I didn't like I went too hard I wipe it back off somewhat which takes it and makes it more like a worn and not a actually sanded down spot and so when it's dry again I start ready I get ready for the for the um finishing touches I put the poly on there and three coats usually I'll just show one of them just because it's the same thing over and over again I sand it down and then I will take and it looks like I show and twice sand it down but I'll sand it down and get some poly and stick it on there and I'll put it on there pretty thick the first coat then two light coats after that and I don't fully wait for it to dry you know it may still be a little bit tacky when I put the next coat on but I I sit there and take and go pretty fast because I have never had a problem with any kind of my any returns at all for any kind of flaws so as you see now that was sold for 32.50 was my price 35.10 was the total with tax it's um it cost me no more than three dollars to make it and so as you look here you will see that Etsy took two ten or two took two two dollars and ten cents took thirty seven cents took seventy four cents because that's because I had ads running but they took two ten for their part the shipping label cost eleven ninety seven and so whenever you figured all that up you know it's it's right at I made about seventeen sixteen seventeen dollars on this product so hope y'all enjoyed this like follow subscribe thank you.